Welcome once again to another Peaceful Solution Character Education Certification course. Everyone can be seated. Those of you that are coming in, running out from the 108 degree weather, <laughs> welcome in to where it's a lot cooler. Um, and those of you that are in different parts of the world, I hope your day has been cooler than ours. It's been very hot here, very hot and very dry. But welcome everyone once again. Uh, for everyone joining us here at the headquarters and also all of those that are joining us on the internet. Uh, once again, uh, we know there's people tuning in every week uh, that are new to these classes, so we want to encourage everyone um, to download all the books. So far, we've uploaded the character, the acceptance, and the self-control unit. They're the teacher's manuals, and of course, they're free for you to download and you can download them on the very top of our Facebook page there there's a drop down menu that says more and you can download the three PDF files of our books and of course they're going to be the teachers manuals and that's what you're going to want and that's what you need to put your notes in because those are the ones that you're going to use to teach the student manuals are meant for the, the students because there's a lot less a lot less information in those then of course they're also available in uh, English and Spanish and soon to be in French and Portuguese so uh, stand by for those and if there's any other language that people are looking for um, not only are we looking to translate it but we're also uh, looking for volunteers to help do it so if you could like to get involved in that please message us we're looking to do as much as we can uh, in as many areas as we can and the key word to this we want to do it for free we want to offer all of this teaching for free that way everyone has an opportunity um, to partake in this and be a part of this because morality is something that you can't put a price on and it's something that can't be measured uh, in value by monetary value it's something that we all benefit from and reap the rewards in as we together come into this uh, agreement of keeping rules and seeing values of others and practicing these basic moral principles and putting them into work into our lives and that's what morality is is putting the morals into work or to work into our lives now we completed the last class we did a review of chapter 3 which is entitled controlling your anger and once again last last class we only did a review for the in-depth information that that chapter brought out please go back and watch the classes before that that um, that William, Catan, and David would have also taught. There's a lot of information uh, going step by step that helps put all of these things together. So the class we covered last week was kind of just a brief summary of what they covered in great detail. So don't ever skip over, you know, the the lessons that go between the chapters because they're extremely important and there's an enormous amount of information that's offered in those classes. So tonight we're going to start chapter four and it's entitled Applying Self-Control to Interaction and Communication. And remember, chapter two was controlling your emotions to your advantage and then we talked about controlling our anger. So now we're going to put it together and applying that self-control when we're interacting and communicating with others. And we're gonna get into detail with it being more than just the words that we say, but the tone of voice we say it in and the way our face looks whenever we say it and the way our the way we're conducting our body language when we say it as far as our hands flying around whether the fingers pointing or you know or our hands are by our side we're going to discuss what all of that does uh, to the information we're trying to get over to someone else and we're also going to remind as we've covered already in the character unit about listening and how listening is a skill and whenever we're communicating we'll rehearse again you know when we're communicating most people want their self to be heard um, and they tend not to listen very well to what's being said but they're always wanting to reply and sometimes I'm sure you've been in discussions uh, it's not hard to be in discussions to where someone is talking to you um, or more it's more that you're talking to them and then the reply they give you is so off the wall you know they didn't hear anything that you just said you know and it could be uh, something about class tonight you know but well did you hear what was said in class tonight about applying self-control uh, to our interaction and communication and someone looks at you and goes yeah he said it was hot today 
you know it is hot but that's not that's only the beginning it's really hot uh too hot texas gets hot but it's a little early to get this hot well everybody turn over to their books on lp4a lp4a and we're going to start with a note to the teacher and once again this is only in the teacher's manuals you won't find this in the student manuals and it's the first gray tab page of chapter four and of course the lesson plans are they're numbered by letters so you'll have lp4a and that'll help separate the lesson plan from the pages that are in the student's book so once again here we have at the very top of the page chapter four applying self-control to interaction and communication now the note to the teacher this is to get our mindset a little bit of rehearsal of what we've talked about so far but whenever we introduce this chapter to the class, this is what we want to convey to the class. This is the information we want to get across to them to get their mindset about what we're, the next building block we're going to be putting on what we've built so far. And we've built a lot so far. We've built an enormous amount from the character unit to the acceptance unit and now with the self-control unit. We've actually, uh, we've, we're solidifying it with the self-control unit. Then we're going to build some more. So here it says, volumes of books have been written about the art of communication and the difficulties involved in interaction. And I dare say, you could get on the internet and download enormous amounts of material that will tell you how to communicate. I've read books that talk about how to communicate. I've read books that people said were the best books, and it shows you how to run businesses, and it teaches you how to lead people. So I called the business that supposedly that was using this curriculum, and you know, just to, I kind of laughed when I said, hey, I heard you guys had this program, and it, was, it wasn't the Peaceful Solution, but I was interested because the author of the Peaceful Solution said, find out what works and what don't work, you know, because we're not, we're not a proud group of people. You know, we just want morality. And these books were going through thoroughly to try to put one point to the next. And it was a business down in South Texas, a huge business corporation. And I asked him, I said, hey, I've read these books that say your company uses this program and, and that it brings everybody together and it teaches true leadership. How does it work? And they said, oh, we quit using that like five years ago. It didn't work. And I thought, well, you know, they wrote a whole book about it. Yeah, they wrote a book about it, but it didn't work. <laughs> so I, I told them, I said, well, let me, let me email you this book. And I did email them a copy, and I did call, and the, and the person that I talked to there said they hadn't had an opportunity to look at it. And I understand when you're running a corporation and things are going okay, your job is going okay, reading 175, 180 pages is not something people are interested in doing. People don't worry about the water lines breaking until they're broken. They don't worry about the house burning down until it's on fire. You know, you don't worry about your heart giving out until, oh no, now I got a bad heart. You know, people don't worry about, you know, the taking care of their teeth until it starts hurting and they got a cavity. Then it's, oh, I should have did that. Well, should have, could have, would have, but now it's too late. Well, our character is something that, you know, by the time that we realize that these difficulties that we face in life with our character it can lead to some very lasting issues in one's life and we've covered some so far in the acceptance unit in the beginning of the self-control unit the character unit and i'll say it again and if you don't realize what we're talking about uh, we can go into great more detail in one-on-one -on -one classes uh, i say explanations and you can email us if you're a teacher or message us on Facebook. If you're a teacher and you'd like more in-depth discussion on what I'm going to say, please email us or message us. And we have certified teachers that would be more than glad to go into more detail one-on-one. -on -one. Um, but we have a certain way that we discuss these situations in the Peaceful Solution, and we don't really readily pour out. Sometimes it can be very vivid, the things that's said and the information that's given. Um, but it's reality. It's a harsh reality, but it's a reality. But we're talking about decisions that youth can make, adults can too, but they make decisions that lead to them contracting HIV, HPV, syphilis, gonorrhea, you know, and they tell you that, ah, oh, just take this medication, it goes away. Well, doctors would tell you it puts it to sleep, but it doesn't go away. 
And when HPV is in your body, usually it surfaces as cancer. And that's when you find out you have HPV unless you get tested for it. But this can be prevented. This does not have to take place. And yes, this also is involved in self-control to our interaction and using self-control in our interactions. That's the only reason I bring that up to kind of get into your mind. It's more than just verbally speaking. And we're going to get into that. But that's a big part of it because that verbally speaking can lead to these other uh, it can lead to making the best of friends. It can lead to uh, horrible relationships that you regret the rest of your life. Or it can lead to uh, being able to walk away from a situation that you knew could have been bad and you were able to walk away and you didn't have to suffer a consequence. You were able to make the right decision. But these books that are out there, I know there's an enormous amount of books. And there's also, notice here it says, talk shows discuss how many problems arise because of misunderstandings? And I challenge everyone, watch, if you see a show, watch it and see if they give you an answer to how to deal with it. We can talk about problems to no end. I just seen on my phone here, got breaking news article where Russia told NATO we can nuke you and get you out of the way in 30 minutes or less. Well, that seems like an answer to Russia, I guess, in dealing with their problem, but you know, the rest of us in society would rather not have this fallout going around and dancing around all around our societies, which is what we're facing. And on a global scale, you know, there's a breakdown in conversation and communication, but everybody's trying to puff their chests out. And why, why do we mention that? Because notice the next sentence. Conflicts arise and wars, yes, wars, underline that, wars are fault because there is a breakdown in the ability to converse and in turn listen to what is being said. Yes, you, if you go into the news today, you'll see where not only political leaders are name calling, you have religious leaders who are name calling, saying very vulgar things. And these are supposed to be people that have a moral standard. You know, these are things that shouldn't take place, but we're seeing them in our society. And political leaders shouldn't do it. Religious leaders shouldn't do it. But that's what we're seeing. But notice here it says self-control is vital to successful communication and healthy interaction. You know, self-control is so important. It's just as important. Self-control to our character is important as oxygen is to your lungs. Try to live without it and see how long you last. Self-control, you let it break down, it will eventually... Uh, lead you to a very negative end and result. The fourth lesson, that's chapter four, will focus on teaching students the skills needed to communicate effectively with respect and consideration. And remember, listening is two things you need to remember about listening. One, it's a choice, as we've covered, and two, it's a skill. And we've covered that. Let me see if I remember right offhand different books on different pages. Let me see if I can remember which one this one is. Yeah, look over to page 46. We read this last class, but just so you have it here in your notes on page 46, and this is something as a teacher you want to make sure the students are remembering. The very bottom of page 46, this is after the STOP acronym was covered. Remember the STOP, think, consider your options, that's your choices and then proceed with the right choice, not proceed with something that will send you to prison for 15 to 20 years. But the very bottom it says, as with any new skill, self-control is developed through determinations, determination, practice, consistency, and responsibility. And that goes right along with listening. And if you remember the VIP section in the character unit, the value imitate practice and helping it become a habit, here at the very last sentence on page 46, it says, when you do this consistently, notice it says, then consistently practice self-control until it becomes a habit. And you'll find that in your character unit on page 73 is where we discuss that. And of course, you also have the ripple effect on how when you do it, it goes outwardly through society. And you'll find that on page 106 in your character unit, both of those coming out of the character unit. VIP, page 73, and the ripple effect on page 106. And of course, that's the benefit of making the right choice. That's the benefit of interacting and communicating appropriately. 
And that's the foundational part that we're trying to get into, not only the minds of our students, but also ourselves. Um, but this is something that we have to choose to do, and then we have to practice it. And when we practice it, the skill of doing it becomes much better. So when we lose it, we have to recognize we lost it, fix what we lost it on, you know, and then go back and try not to do it again and work at not doing it again. Make conscious effort to not do it again. Continuing here in the second paragraph, it says, let us not lose sight of the ability we have as educators to influence students in positive moral development. In other words, don't take it lightly as teachers. Be mindful of how we say things, how we conduct ourselves, how we communicate with the students, and the things that we offer a student. You know, one thing the author always said, and he had an example he would give, and, and the word was criticism. And he said that whenever a student does something wrong and you haven't taught the student how to do it right, then if you talk down to the student, that's criticism. But if you've taught the student the right and proper way to do things and they still make the wrong choice, then when you correct them, that's called correction. And we need to offer correction and we ourselves need to be corrected. Sometimes we can be corrected by children. You know, uh, it never hurts for someone to point out if we're doing something wrong. And that's one thing as educators we have to realize. Sometimes our students might point out something that helps us. And we should never be too, um, as one of the negative character traits of pride is, we should be uh, the positive character trait of having humility and always being ready. It's not easy to do, but it's something we need to do. And continuing on, it says, one of the best ways a teacher can instruct students in the art of proper communication once again is by example. In other words, the way we talk to the students, the way we communicate, and the effort we put forth. You know, if as a teacher you get mad at your students and you grab a, you know, your Webster's Dictionary and you throw it from one end of the room to the other and it bounces off the wall, you can't really get too upset when the student stands up a week later and throws his math book from one part of the classroom to the other part of the classroom. You know, it's like a parent telling your children they shouldn't smoke as they sit there smoking. Doesn't make too much sense. Or, you know, the parent that's looking at the child and saying, you're not supposed to be yelling at me. You're supposed to be listening as you yell at the child. You know, and it's sometimes parents have to realize, and so do teachers, students can be echoes. And they echo back to you what you say to them. You know, it bounces right back off the wall. And if it sounds offensive when the student says it to you, it was probably offensive when you said it to the student. Now, I don't mean in correcting. I mean by belittling, name-calling, putting down. Uh, these are things that we can look, as we covered hindsight is twenty twenty in the acceptance unit, we can look back and realize, I probably shouldn't have done that. But probably shouldn't have done it leads to a lot of problems, and it's extremely difficult to fix. You know, once you're in a ditch, the worst thing you can do is keep digging the hole deeper. Best thing to do is try to fill the dirt back in and get out. But by coming up with excuses and ignoring the responsibilities that we're supposed to put uh, into our lives and making it different and making the right choice, we just dig it deeper. And you dig deep enough and you, you get past the dirt and you probably end up in something else, but it's not a great thing. But continuing on, it says, make every effort to actively listen to your students, remembering to read body language, facial expressions, and tone of voice. And we're going to cover some more of those. We covered that in the character unit, but we're going to get into greater detail in this unit. But once again, it's more than just words. Listen to what they say. Uh, look at the body language they're offering when they say it, their facial expressions, and also their tone of voice. And we've mentioned some of that even in the previous chapter. So notice it says encourage, encourage proper communication skills within the classroom at all times. Never let it be a time to where, you know, we're going to listen for six hours of the day and the last hour of the day you can, uh, uh, I'll say it in a southern way, the way our teachers used to tell us. Raise hell. That's what our teachers told us in the classroom. I don't know if that's politically correct today, but that's what it was when I was growing up. Um, they would say, act like a fool when I was growing up. Might not be politically correct today to say that, but um, 
I'm not for sure the terminology uh, insubordinate, I guess, is what they would say today to all for more political correctness. But, you know, acting like someone without the knowledge, like you don't know what the proper way to conduct yourself is. It says, encourage uh, proper communication skills within the classroom, once again, at all times. Never condone disrespectful, aggressive, or violent interactions. And above all, maintain your own self-control in every teacher-student interaction. You know, and just for your notes here, remember chapter 3. You can write this at the bottom of the acceptance unit. That was entitled, Communication Leads to Healthy Interaction. So you'll want to go back and rehearse those, that chapter, the information that was in there. And remember what interaction means. It's the way we affect and influence each other. The way we affect and influence each other. You know, and words are powerful. They help to convey our needs, thoughts, feelings, and consequently, they, they determine our character. You know, so when we're trying to get our thoughts and feelings across to other people, it's very important that we uh, remember the empathy that was talked about in the character unit and also in the acceptance unit. And just for your, you can put on a side note here, uh, back up in that last paragraph where it says, make every effort to actively listen to your students. Um, put down page 49 for your notes of the acceptance unit because that's where it reminded us to listen with empathy and remember what that meant in the character unit. It means to put ourselves in the other person's shoes. Try to see it from the way they're looking at it. And then, of course, you have the four do's and two don'ts also uh, right around there in the acceptance unit, page 49. So with that information, you know, and this is for the teacher. This is what the teacher's putting back into their mind. And these are notes you want to write down. And I can tell you, these are notes that I got by listening to the other certified teachers. Um, these were not notes because I write my notes in a different colored ink. The, the notes I get from coming to classes, I write in a totally different color. So all the notes I just gave you, I got from coming to classes listening to the other certified teachers. And they're really great notes, and they help a lot and understanding how this puzzle is going together. And when you understand, you know, it's kind of like a, like a motor. You know, when you, if you've ever worked on a car motor and you realize it's just a big air pump, that's all it is, uh, when you can understand how it operates and how every part supports the next part, uh, you can be more efficient at uh, fixing or building one. Character is the same way. When we become more knowledgeable about the inner working parts and how important it is to not fall short or to not give in to doing the wrong thing, when we realize that every one of these parts are important, and it's just like if you've ever opened up the back of a watch and you see all these little gears turning, if one gear gets off, the watch stops working. Well, then you have to realign everything again. You know, uh, and characters kind of like uh, spark plugs on a car. There's a certain order that you have to put the wires in, and if you don't like that order and you decide to do it your own way, you won't go very far. You'll, you'll be finding a mechanic. But everything has to be done in the right and proper way, and that helps us to conduct ourselves in a way of morality. And that's what the Peaceful Solution is offering. Now here we want to go ahead and start our lesson plan. That was the note to the teacher. That was to get our mindset as teachers uh, to have some interaction with our students and kind of explain to them another piece of this puzzle. So here on page LP, LP4, page C, uh, it says lesson plan applying self-control to interaction and positive communication. And of course we have our purpose and objective which we, is what we have with every chapter, and we want to make sure that we're achieving this. And it says, students will learn how to apply self-control to the way they communicate and interact. They will also learn practical ways to respond to those who lack self-control. Notice it says they will learn how to apply. It doesn't mean they're going to choose to do it, but we need to show them the benefits, and then we can expect them to choose to do it. If you never teach them, how to do it, don't expect them to do it. It's like taking them in algebra class and the first thing you do is give them a test. Could you imagine getting the final exam on the first day of school? You walk in for algebra one or algebra two and all of a sudden, what is this? Oh, this is the final exam. 
Well, you haven't given me my book yet. No, don't worry about it. This is life. You take it as it comes. But that's kind of how we say it when it comes to making moral choices. We wouldn't dare do that with math or, you know, English, science. We wouldn't dare do that. But we'll readily do that with character education. And it's not fair to, not only to our students, it's not fair to society to do such a thing. But here, our materials, of course, you'll have your students' handbooks for your students. And then here's our procedures. And the first procedure of every lesson is always to review the previous lesson, unless it's chapter one, then you're reviewing the previous book. But this, we're going to review the previous chapter, which was controlling our anger. And here we see procedure one, and it says, review the previous lesson entitled, Control Your Anger, by asking students the following questions. So we're going to have two questions here. And the first one, and this, you know, this can be a tricky, and you can have some fun with this to see what they remember. Are conflicts excuses to become angry? And don't let them just give you a yes or no answer. You know, and you can also, you know, get with them a little bit and say, and can someone actually make you angry? And see what they say. By this point, they should know. No one makes me angry. I choose to become angry. They should be to that point. That means they believe it. But as more they go through their everyday life and they experience it, they'll learn that that's a very true statement. You have to, true, you have to choose to become angry in situations. You can very easily deal with them properly and walk away. And you find great satisfaction when you've dealt with something that you were getting really, you know, you, you felt the temperature going up, your palms getting sweaty, your fists starting to clench. You know, your heart beats a little faster, as we talked about. But whenever you can walk away and know you didn't do anything wrong or that you didn't make it worse, there's still some repair that has to be done to the situation, but you didn't make it worse. That's when you know you're moving in the right direction. And most of the time, I think when conflicts arise, you're going to find out that we don't readily solve them at that instant, but the goal is not to make it worse. In other words, the house is on fire and it's time to start using water. Don't get gasoline and decide to pour more gasoline on the fire and then wonder, well, I have no idea why that guy don't like me. You know, all I said, he goes, I know I'm acting like a fool. And all I said was, yep, you're right. <laughs> you know, it's not always great to agree with people when they're putting themselves down, that's for sure. But look over to page 63. You know, we're talking about excuses here for becoming angry. Are conflicts excuses to become angry? Remember, this is the section entitled, Work It Out, Don't Fight It Out. And it doesn't mean just fist fighting. You see the referee there and holding two people back with their shoulder here. Uh, it doesn't mean just fist fighting. It could also be words. And, you know, never forget, never underestimate the value of what we learned in Chapter 2 of the Character Unit about verbal and physical aggression. Never, ever underestimate that where... We think, well, you know, it's not like somebody beat them. They didn't really punch them. They just verbally attacked them. That can be very detrimental, and it can be deadly. But once again, here on page 63, it says, Another common trap lies in abusive behavior as a means to resolve conflicts. Just because you have a conflict with someone, notice, does not, does not mean you have to resort to verbal or physical abuse to get your point across. And here's the part you can underline to go with that uh, question. Conflicts are not excuses to become angry. Just because there's a conflict doesn't mean you need to uh, become angry. And now I will, I'll ask you, um, and I'll see if I can pull it up and I'll read it and I'll tell, let you tell me whether you think this is anger or not, if I can uh, think of this right here. This is a comment that was made. This was reported by numerous websites. Russia space boss warns against nuclear war. NATO, you will be destroyed in half an hour. Now, does that sound like something that's de-escalating a conflict? Or is that something that sounds like uh, we're going to punch you in the mouth so hard you won't ever run your mouth about us again? Think about that's on a global scale. You know, and we're talking about 
we're talking about starting in society because we're going to have to. You have to start with your common folk first. Your students of today are leaders of tomorrow. If you really think that you're going to get with a person that made this statement, you know, I'm not for sure if you'll get him to see the right way before he wants to push a nuke button or not. He's already decided in his mind what he wants to do, you know, and why. You know, it, it don't. I'm not saying that person's a negative or, or a bad person. He made a negative statement. Not necessarily saying he's a bad person. I'm saying he probably hasn't, well, he definitely hasn't been taught the right and proper way to make a decision, but he's probably never even considered other options because of the training he's been given. This is what you're supposed to do. Beat your chest a little bit harder than the person across the ocean there or the person just south of you. But once again, it says, uh, once again, here on page 63, it says, conflicts are simply disagreements between people with different opinions, needs, and wants. And that's exactly what we see in our world today. When people have different opinions uh, about how we should live, what we should do, um, people get very aggravated. Um, I won't even mention too much in detail about what's going on with the Supreme Court right now. But it's amazing the people that will stand up against preserving life. It's mind-blowing. As, uh, as you will learn in the next chapter, that's the chapter that we're uh, basically starting, notice it says respectful communication and interaction as well as listening to each other can resolve any conflict a lot faster than anger ever could. So it's very important, you know, that you can get to get them to say no conflicts are not excuses to become angry. But notice here it also gave us the way to deal with these conflicts. It says that they can be resolved. Any conflict can be resolved a lot faster than anger by just, you know, um, respectful communication and interaction as well as listening. Listening. It's hard to solve a problem if we only want to state our point of view. If we want people to listen to what we feel and think, we have to be readily available and ready to listen to what the other person also feels and thinks. And that's how basic uh, respectful communication takes place. And you can't ever say that, well, I, I, this person's already wrong, don't even know why I'd listen to him. Because it's respectful to listen to the person that's trying to communicate to resolve a conflict. You know, resolving the conflict is two people or the group of people walking away and things being better. If people walk away and they they still speaking negative things, you know, gossiping, slandering, we've talked about those things in the character unit. Those are things that are detrimental and the conflict isn't resolved. And we need to make sure we understand that whenever we walk away and we think, okay, everything's dealt with, we all agreed. And then people walk away talking negative about other people? That's not a resolved conflict. You know, that's displacement. And we've already covered that. And eventually it's going to it's going to boil over. And here we have B, the next question. It says, what are some positive ways to handle your anger? And I know a lot of people, you know, we hear students in schools, oh, I punch the walls. You know, I go I go home and I have a kicking bag. I kick the kicking bag. I just take it all out on that. That's what I do. And if anybody says that, ask them, can you show us where we've covered that so far? Where is punching the walls an acceptable way? You know, you only feel like you're strong when you're punching the sheetrock and you're missing the studs, but the day you hit where the stud is at is the day you would you hadn't punched the wall. I've seen people that have done that and they broke their hand. Uh, and it's not a very smart thing to do. But looking over here for the answers on pages 75 through 77. And that's, of course, in chapter 3 of Controlling Your Anger. And it was entitled, Appropriate Ways to Deal with Anger. And I'll just read the bullet points here. Um, and, of course, you can pick and choose something if you want to uh, convey this. But I know uh, David covered this in great detail. And I would recommend going back and listening to that class where he covered this. Appropriate ways to deal with anger. Notice the first one is speak in a respectful tone of voice and use respectful words. The second one is use I language to communicate your feelings. The third is behave in a peaceful way. And then we have the fourth one here on page 76. Use your positive character traits 
And notice it says the positive character trait of humility and compassion. That's extremely important. And then the next one we have, if possible, walk away and take a time out. Excuse me. If possible, walk away and take time out to cool down. Now, notice if possible. If you're a student and your authority is talking to you, it's not right to turn and walk away. But it's also extremely important for the person who's talking to the other person to be doing it in a respectful and appropriate way. You know, because it can get very ugly if it's not. And then here on page 77, looking across the page, it says, talk to a parent, guardian, or counselor about your plan to control your anger. In other words, you got to form something. If there's a problem, something's broken down, you have to create a plan. Go to someone who's, you know, knowledgeable of these things. You wouldn't want to go to, you know, that guy really made me mad. You know where I can get a gun? You know, your best friend at school, yeah, I can get you set up. I can get you, ta- you'll take care of that guy. Don't worry about it. What day are you going to do it? Because I'm not coming to school that day, by the way. <laughs> you know, that's, that's not a friend at all. So you think about those things, about positive ways to deal with anger and all of those. And you can think of a few more, and we will as we proceed through. Those are just some starter points to deal with. But humility and compassion are extremely important in bringing the anger down, the de-escalation. You know, if you, and this is something the author of The Peaceful Solution told me one time about compassion and humility. He said it's like dropping ice cubes into your tea. You know, if you don't like hot tea and you want it cooler, you drop the ice cubes in and it gets right to where you want it and you can enjoy it and it makes it where you really can just, you know, it's all you ever wanted. That one glass of tea, it's got ice cubes in it. Well, when you use compassion and humility, it's the same thing with anger. It helps bring down, remember, uh, Catan talked about those hot thoughts and those cool thoughts. Well, you know, we picture it in that way to kind of bring down the temperament, so to speak. Um, You know, putting an ice cube on somebody's red forehead because they're mad, that isn't going to help them. You know, but think about words, things that can be said, things that can be done to bring down... Uh, the pressure to bring down the, uh, as you see it boiling, to reduce that. Take the heat away. That's how you get a pot to stop boiling, is by reducing the heat. And that's the same thing with anger. You reduce uh, the, the things that are causing the emotions to rise. You have to reduce them. We have to reduce them. Then, after, uh, after finishing chapter one, and once again, there are chapter one, procedure one, there's no rush to complete this. When you're having interactive conversation and students are turning over and they're covering and they're pulling back from what they've been taught, you know, try to give them that room to do that. Try to give them that, uh, that opportunity to do that. And you know, guide, guide those things, guide those discussions, let them move forward with those. Um, there's no need to rush through this. You know, life is something that we take eight months in school to teach algebra one character education can't be taught 30 minutes of the school day you know you need to take just as much time we would see enormous changes in society um, if society would implement this and we know there's a lot of countries you know from india to russia to japan you know and many countries in africa and south america and and a couple in europe that are seeing that we really need to put this to work in our community. We really need to start doing something. And this program fits into every walk of life. It doesn't matter what your religion is. It doesn't matter what color your skin is. It doesn't matter how rich or poor you are. They know we have people readily tell us this is the only organization we've ever met that says we will send you books for free. Now, they're digital books, and you can print them out, most people charge you just to get the PDF file, you know, but we were taught long ago as certified teachers, um, if you're looking for money in the Peaceful Solution Character Education Program, you came to the wrong place. You know, you know, we were told, you learn this program and teach it free. Everywhere you go, free. And we have traveled the world for free. We didn't travel for free, but we did the work for free. <laughs> Traveling was pretty expensive. I don't even... Uh, I have to have cool thoughts and not think about that. We'll have to bring that back down. Nah, not really. A lot of enjoyable times in doing this work.
It's been a great time and it's still a great time to do this. Well, procedure two, it says guide class feedback by asking students the following questions. So once again, we're still moving forward by, you're kind of picking their brain, so to speak, to see what they remember. Notice here the first one, letter A. Have you ever had a misunderstanding with a friend, family member, or authority figure? You know, and what do you think the answer to that's going to be? That should be a resounding yes. You know, uh, and then pull back from what we've covered thus far. And it doesn't have to be the first three chapters of this book. If you've covered what you should have covered, the character unit and the acceptance unit, uh, pull back from those and see what they can come up with. And don't limit them to what's been covered so far. You know, and, and always remember the jumping to conclusions uh, that we read on page 62 of the self-control unit where, you know, let's turn back over there really quickly about these misunderstandings. You know, because it starts off with, notice the word insecurities on page 62. Insecurities can also lead to jumping to conclusions. Jumping to conclusions simply means arriving at a false belief due to a lack of accurate, truthful information. In other words, didn't get all the facts. If you have ever seen an optical illusion, then you are familiar with how easy it is for us to be tricked by what we see. You know, we have different pictures, and you can go online and get these pictures where they're optical illusions. I think the most popular one is, do you see the duck or the rabbit? Uh, that's a very popular optical illusion. Uh, but look here at the very bottom, or the second paragraph. Not the very bottom, but the second paragraph. It says, we sometimes make assumptions based on insecurities about what we see and hear. For example... You see two of your friends at the water fountain. The reason I'm reading this one, we have used this one to no end. They're talking and laughing while looking in your direction. You think they're talking and laughing at you, so you ignore them for the rest of the day. If you had taken the time to gather the facts, you would have found that they were laughing at a funny poster that was tacked to the wall directly behind you. And we have used this example in many schools. I think if you... If you were to go to like Laredo, Texas, any child that went to school between 2000, I guess five, when William was down there teaching until 2015, they could tell you that example because they heard it every year in school. Some of them heard it 10, 10 times, 11 times throughout their, their school years there, but they could always relate to it. You know, and that seems like a very simple, basic comment. But I can tell you, when we were discussing these things with the students, something that simple actually meant a lot to them. And once again, as we've said before, never underestimate the power of words. And I've learned never underestimate the examples that the Peaceful Solution offers. Because these examples have been tried, tested, and proven. It wasn't just some, ah, that sounds great, let's just throw that in the book. There was a lot of effort by an enormous amount of people that went into putting these things together. And some of these are life experiences that they went through. But with that in mind, looking back over to L, uh, lesson plan, LP4, page C, lesson plan 4, page C. Then notice here, B, B, and this, we're still in procedure 2. Were you able to resolve the misunderstanding in a peaceful way, or were there hurt feelings that persisted over time? You know, when you think about, as we said earlier, whenever a situation takes place and things are said and you're trying to de-escalate the situation, don't ever think that you have to. There's sometimes you can resolve everything in that instance. There's sometimes the problem can be more expounded. It can be more vast and it has to be dealt with over a period of time. And that's the realistic goals we talked about in the acceptance unit. That when there's confrontation, sometimes it takes a little bit of time of getting that conflict to go away, and that's what is needed. Sometimes you can do it fairly quickly. But it's better to be honest with yourself and not say, oh, no, nah, don't worry, nah, no harm done, no harm done. And, you know, as soon as you turn away, that sorry son of a blank, you know, I can't believe he's come up and tried to apologize to me, you know, and that's, that doesn't make any successful headway. But that's very common of how things are done. 
Well, back here, notice we're having this discussion with your students. You ask them if they were able to resolve this. And then you have C. Have you ever had to deal with someone who was out of control? And if they're going to public schools, most definitely they have seen people out of control. Um, I remember one time we were, I won't mention the school, but we were in the city of Houston and we were leaving and there were two girls got into a fight as people were getting into the cars and school buses. A lot of students at this school. And this school even had a dress code, which a lot of schools don't. This one had a dress code. And you could identify the classes, 6th, 7th, and 8th, by the color of shirts they were wearing. Every class, it was white, red, black. So if they were black, they were 8th grade, red was 7th, white was 6th. And two girls got into a fight. And, of course, we had a lot of students with us. And I noticed how much faster they were walking once the fight started to try to get back to the buses we had. But we watched the security guard come up, and we thought, well, this will go okay. He'll break it up. The two girls turned from beating each other, and they came into an agreement all of a sudden to beat the security guard. They both started beating the security guard, and once they had him beat down on the ground, somehow this agreement of unity went back and dissolved. They started beating each other again. And then there was a lot of security out there by that time. But, you know, you think about, and I, I've always pondered, how do two people that are beating each other, pulling hair, kicking, when someone comes in to try to bring peace, they immediately come into agreement to both beat him? You know, and I, it was, and you could imagine, you know, a lot of these people that work security, and I'm not saying this is a bad thing, they're older people. You know, these are jobs that they've kind of retired and they're wanting to just get involved and do something, and this was an older gentleman, and it didn't take much for them to do what they did. It wasn't right. I was kind of mind blown that they would do someone that age that way. And, you know, I think about when I see these situations and problems, you know that the peaceful solution has the answers to fix situations. But when you look at something like that, the problems are very deep. And that didn't start between two people disagreeing. That's a lot of inappropriate training that has went into the lives of people. So when you see something like that, don't immediately think they're bad people. Start considering what led to people becoming that way. What led to someone thinking that that was the way to resolve the conflict? And when you start thinking of it in that way, you, it's easy to classify people. As, as they say, good or bad. You know, peaceful solution says positive or negative. Um, and remember what it says, we're pretty much a mixture of both. Um, always consider what can be done to fix it. And everybody, everybody has the opportunity to make the choice to fix their lives. Doesn't mean they will, but it means that we have to have the opportunity given to us. Turning over to page D, once again, we still have this class discussion going on, and these are things that you'll find are very enjoyable when they're geared back toward what we've studied. Here in Procedure 3, it says, Ask students what they think the previous questions have in common. Inform students that all three questions relate to how we communicate and interact, and that's what this chapter is about. Tell students that they will learn how to apply self-control to the way they communicate, and interact with their peers, family members, and those in authority. You know, and sometimes family members, yes, can be those in authority, and sometimes peers can be those in authority. You know, an example that we, we like to give in the Peaceful Solution, in the Peaceful Solution, we have a lot of certified teachers, and everyone has their assigned roles that they play. And we can be a group of people that when we go to deal with this one certain job, this one certified teacher is the one that's in charge. In other words, they're responsible. That's what it means to be in charge. It means to be responsible. They're the ones that they're responsible. They're the supervisor. And this very same group of people can go over here to start doing this job. The same group of people, the supervisor that was responsible here is no longer the one that's the supervisor. Now there's a different one that's a supervisor. And it's the same group of people. And then you can go to the next place, and you have another one who's the supervisor, and you're still moving the same group of people around. 
And in that group of people, everyone is actually a supervisor somewhere in that work that's being done. But depending on where you're at, depends on who the supervisor is. And of course, when you're dealing with your peers, and that can be through work or school, teachers are the same way. Teachers have authority, but there's teachers who have greater authority. And then there's, you know, principals, vice principals, so to speak, and it goes up all the way to the district. Uh, my mind goes blank to the, uh, the director of the school district. William, what do you call that? <laughs> Superintendent, yes. I tell you what, your mind can go blank at the wrong time. And man, how many we've met with. Um, but once again, you have this talking about this communication. And think about examples in your own life. But the peaceful solution is very unique in the way it's laid out. To the point to where it is done purposely. To where everyone that is a certified teacher is set to be a you can say a worker you can say a student but they're also set to be a teacher and a leader so you're one one day one the next like today I'm the teacher next class I'm the student and I'm a student that comes in just like everybody else that watches or either comes and sets in class and takes notes and it's just, it's very important to always remember that. There's never a day you come and, well, I'm the teacher, and unless I'm here, what goes on is not important. It's only when I'm up there does it, does, is it important. Otherwise, it's not important. You know, that right there would mean that you need to go back and start in the character unit again. You know, and that's something that we've all learned. The teachers that teach these classes, we have traveled for years together. And we have heard each other teach for years together. And you pretty much know what they're going to say, but as topics, as circumstances in society changes, examples change. And you learn so much more and more things are put together. And really, as a society with technology, you know, knowledge is just pouring out with technology, you know, verifying and certifying and confirming all of these things that we've seen that you know it kind of looked that way but got no proof to prove it but it kind of looked this way and then all of a sudden now you got proof so it's it's ever evolving so to speak the examples the knowledge and the things that can be used and and these things are a oh man they're valuable and the reason i bring that out because if if you have this taught in the seventh grade you got to offer them something in the eighth grade too and you got to offer them something in the ninth grade too. And the Peaceful Solution actually has the books to do that. The Peaceful Solution actually has the curricula where every year you're building, you're putting a piece onto this puzzle. Um, that's for the teachers to know. But for the students, if you don't offer it to them, they're never going to get it. You know, so when students are misbehaving and, and not listening to anything in the school, and then, well, we don't have time to teach character education. Well, that just, that means. I, I, I'm ready to keep being called foul language, you know, vulgar words and people stealing and doing very inappropriate things. Well, looking here to procedure four, we're going to start this, but we, we won't get too far into it because this is a great place for our next teacher that's going to pick up William. Um, we don't want to get too far into it because it's, it goes together fairly, fairly quickly. So we'll, we'll start part of the introduction and try to get through the introduction and that'll give William a great place to uh, pick up and move forward. But it says here we're going to have students turn to pages 89 through 91 in their handbooks and read the section entitled Introduction and What Exactly is Communication? Stress that for communication to be successful, self-control, and you want to underline that word, must. Any time in life will we see a word that says you must that means it has to be done. <laughs> you can't get success without it. You know, if it says you might, eh, that's not a must. But if you must do it, for you to get success, for us to get success, we have to put this to work in our lives. So looking over here to page 89, this will be the first actual thing we've read thus far uh, in starting this chapter. 
And at the very top, it says, it takes self-control to interact and communicate respectfully. And that's the peaceful solution, a quote from the peaceful solution. So chapter four, applying self-control to interaction and communication. Now this is the first page in the student's handbook that they're going to see. Everything we've covered thus far, now you could have referenced and had them turn back to pages in chapters one, two, and three, and even the acceptance unit and the character unit if they're available. Um, but this is the first thing they're going to be seeing in their books at the very beginning of chapter four. So once again, here, starting with the first paragraph, it says, by using both language and behavior, we share our feelings, needs, and wants with others as they in turn share theirs with us. So it's kind of, you know, that synergistic uh, map there that David keeps showing how it rotates through and one thing connects to another. Or as I always try to remember for every action, there's a reaction. Relating to our family and friends enriches and fulfills our lives. Uh, imagine not being able to communicate with those you care about. You know, think about just not being able to communicate with anyone. You know, and I went online, and you can go on YouTube, and I thought it was very interesting. And I'd done this because the author of uh, The Peaceful Solution was trying to get us to see things from different perspectives as certified teachers. Then one of the things he said, you know, was go online and see if you can find where people were in comas, but yet they could hear everything that was going on around them. But they couldn't talk, they couldn't move, they couldn't write, they couldn't move their fingers, nothing. And I was amazed at how many people you can find that were in comas for a few months, a couple years, uh, some were quite a few years, but they could actually hear the conversations that were going on and they actually, it was like I was there, I just couldn't move. Couldn't say anything, but I could hear everything going on around me. I knew what people were talking about and people would ask me questions, but I couldn't respond. You know, and that stuff's readily available with the technology we have to see stuff and, and hear about things like that. And, you know, think about how miserable that would be. Well, it's really that miserable when you're communicating, but you really don't know the right and proper way to communicate. Because what's worse, um, and I have found this going to different countries that do not speak English. When I try to convey information, a lot of times I have to use translators. And I understand certain languages to where I understand what's being translated. And sometimes I can tell the translator didn't, tra he didn't say what I wanted him to say or she didn't say what I wanted to say. And I have to reword it in English to make it sound in that language a little different. Um, now, if I don't know the language, it's, it's very difficult to understand. But imagine communicating with someone who can't speak the same language you speak but you're trying to convey this information. It's an enormous challenge. But you know what? It's possible and can be done, um, especially if it's an emergency. Imagine that something's going wrong and you find someone who's speaking Chinese or Japanese, but there's an emergency taking place and they're all excited and you can tell by the body language something's really wrong and you can't understand a word they're saying. Imagine how helpless that feels. You know, imagine how bad the person that's wanting to help feels. Well, keep these things in mind and kind of let your mind expound with these things because we have a vast society. We have different cultures as we talked about in the acceptance unit and we have different languages. And as we talked about in the acceptance unit, all of those people have the same value. It doesn't, you don't measure people like we measure the currency of the U.S. dollar compared to you know, the Colombian peso, so to speak. I was shocked when I realized that one U.S. dollar equals 3,255 Colombian peso. You know, that means $10,000 down there is like $3. That's astronomical. You know, and you think about how do people survive in these situations? How do they actually make life work in these situations? And these are people that their value, their quality of life might be less as far as what they can experience, but their value as a human being is just as equal to anybody else's. And all human beings have the same value. 
And that we need to make sure we, rem we remember that in everything that we do. But finishing out this very top paragraph, it says simple things that you can take for granted would be impossible. We would be unable to tell someone about our day or share our likes and dislikes with our family and friends. So I'm going to stop at that point right there because I know William's going to recover uh, that paragraph and some of the things we discussed thus far. But please, you know, with all the class discussion we've talked about and we've thought about, remember how vast our society is, you know, uh, but also remember that it starts in our communities. It starts in our lives and it goes out from our lives. As we said, teachers lead by examples. If we can do it and we're willing to do it, we teach others to do it, they do it, they teach others to do it, it's the only way to fix a society. And if people say, well, eh, I don't see where society is very harmful, uh, just Google where Russia just told NATO they could nuke them in 30 minutes. I'd say it's getting pretty bad. Those aren't my words. Those are words that have been talked about, seems like, for the last three months. That's all they're talking about. You know, it's not like where you see, uh, oh, somebody dropped a bomb on a hospital, you know, in Syria. Or somebody did something bad in Ukraine. You know, society's going to have to wake up before it's too late. You let nuclear war take place, we're all going to know nuclear war take place. It won't be, oh, they dropped the bomb over there, it doesn't affect us. You know, go online and look at the smoke coming from the New Mexico fires or the, the dust coming from uh, the dust storms up north right now that are heading south. You can see them on space maps on how these things travel. Nuclear fallout travels the same way. You know, we live in a society to where moral character education is not just a luxury, it's a must. It's needed. It's like oxygen to the lungs. So once again, thank all of you for joining us. Our next class will be 5.11. Yeah, I was going to say 5.8. That's today. 5.11, and it will be at 5.30, and we'll be joining back in with William. Thank you for joining us, and we look forward to seeing you again.